Well, greetings once again to my shop. This is Sam in Wyoming. And today's topic, I'm gonna to cover chucks and chuck jaws. If you're in the market for selecting a chuck or getting a new set of jaws, I'm gonna cover some of the important considerations you need to think about when spending your money. So the scope of this video is gonna be rather narrow. I'm gonna talk about chucks and jaws. So let's take a look. Well, you are looking at a few chucks I've collected over the years, and you may think this is a little mind-boggling. Well, it might be. No one should go out and spend lots and lots of money on chucks and jaws until you figure out what you're going to turn. So let's take a look at some of the guidelines for selecting a chuck. Depends on what you're going to turn. Are you turning finials and bottle stoppers or 20-inch bowls and hollow forms? Now most everybody I know, including myself, started out with this kind of a chuck. This is a small Nova chuck, this one, with two inch jaws or 50 millimeter jaws. Now, I have two of them. One is for an inch and a quarter spindle lathe and the other one is for my one inch. Well, that is maybe a bit of a luxury, but sometimes I do classes in my shop, and every month I've got a club meeting here in my shop. So changing jaws is just not an option for me. It's too inconvenient, and I have four lays in my shop with one-inch spindles and inch-and-a-quarter spindles. So there's uh, a good option for you. Let's put this one aside. And let's take a look at this large chuck. This is the Vicmark 120 with similar jaws. Now let me tilt this thing up for you here. There we go. Now, believe it or not, I measure the inside of these jaws, and they're just a little bit narrower than these jaws, like an eighth of an inch. This one's an eighth of an inch bigger on the compression fixing. They look a lot bigger because they're heftier this way. Now I'm certain that anybody that started out with this configuration of a chuck and the two inch jaws turned a bowl. I would not recommend turning a bowl much more than six or eight inches and a little bit shallow with these jaws. It's not a great cross grain Chuck, in my opinion. I believe this configuration of the two inch jaws is more for spindles like a lidded box. Now this setup right here, the Vicmark 120 with the similar jaws, although they're a lot beefier as you can tell. I would turn a 10-12 inch bowl with this set and not worry a bit. If you have a nice fixing and a good tenon and a spigot, you're in good shape. Now just a side note, this is a very large chuck for these jaws. However, I do have other sets of jaws that I use. These are some 5 inch or 5 and a half inch jaws that I use for larger bowls that I can put on here. And I do that occasionally. I'm not always turning a very large bowl. So I'm more inclined to use this setup than the large jaws. So through the process of elimination, let's just take a look at some of the different jaws you have available. I love this set of jaws. Now this particular set is a Nova Chuck made by Technotool. And these jaws are bowl jaws. Now, my friend Roger Durst at Craft Supplies informs me that they no longer carry the Technotool or the Nova line, but the record series is very similar and the jaws are pretty much all the same. So if you want, want to look some of these up, you can find those in the Craft Supplies catalog. And if you have any questions, I'm sure Roger Durst is the guy to ask. He's really knowledgeable about lathes and chucks and that sort of thing. So if I'm really, really turning something, I could turn a hollow form with these jaws. Um, maybe not the largest hollow form, 
but these are really secure. These are just awesome and look how hefty they are. So I love these. They're really nice. So if we we're getting into a little bit larger bowl and something that's a little bit deeper, this is a really good set. Now again, these are made by Technotool. These are the deep gripper jaws. And I really like these for hollow forms. If I want to make a really, really uh, thick tenon and stick it way down inside there, that's a really secure fixing. And it's also got the dovetail uh, profile on the very end of those, or the top of those jaws. These are three inch jaws measured by the compression opening right here. And it's very nice to have a series of jaws that go from very small to very large. And if you misjudge a tenon or a spigot, you have a set of jaws that will fit that. Is that a luxury or a necessity? Well, I'll leave that to you to decide. Another consideration is, are you doing a compression fitting or an expansion fitting? And I like this because it's a little bit bigger than the two inch jaws. It's good for bowls maybe up to 12, 14 inches. And you can also do platters, maybe smaller platters, with an expansion fixing on these. And that's very nice. Now one more consideration I kind of touched on earlier is the size of the spindle. If you have a lathe with a one inch spindle, then you need to identify that when you're buying a chuck. And usually it'll have that as a drop down menu on the particular uh, chuck you're buying. This chuck has one and a quarter inch threads on it and this one is one inch. So that's an important aspect. And usually you'll get an insert and like I said you'll have to specify that when you buy the chuck. Now another consideration is horsepower. If I try to put this set of jaws with this chuck on my small delta lathe or my jet lathe I may have a problem. This has considerable weight to it. This is a Vicmark 120 chuck with a cup jaws and this is really nice. This will take pretty much any bowl my 20 inch Powermatic is going to handle and it's also got a very deep recess in here. You can either do a very deep spigot on that for security. You can form a dovetail on this uh, half inch up here. This is a dovetail recess there. And you can have the corresponding dovetail on your spigot. Now if you're looking at a very tall closed form that's in the works, it's been drying for a while. And I have the remnants of the tenon right here. Now I think I probably need to put that back on the lathe sometime and do a little work. So these jaws would be perfect for that. All I need to do is form a tenon higher up right here that's going to sit in that. And this is not going to be in the way. There's enough depth there to handle that. So that's a great use of these jaws for some sort of a form like that. Now, one of the difficult questions to answer when you're a new wood turner is simply, what am I going to turn? You've seen a few people turn pens or little bowls or whatever. What are you going to turn? And that's going to determine what kind of chuck you're going to need and what kind of jaws you're going to need. And as I said before, most of the people start out with a small chuck and two inch jaws. And I think this is an important decision, but it's something you're going to use in your shop. So I would start out with that. If you start out with something a little bit different, like this set right here, well that limits you quite a bit to what you're going to turn. So, and a lot of times it gets back to money. How much money do you have and how much do you want to spend and dedicate to your shop? Accessories beyond your lathe can be very expensive. All that can equal a lot more than your lathe uh, cost when you began to turn. Now something else to think about is simply what are you going to be doing in a year or five years? 
What are your future plans for turning? Are you going to be turning the same thing you're turning right now? Maybe not. So that's an important consideration for planning for the future as far as buying that chuck or that set of jaws. Now one of the things that happens in my shop is I do classes occasionally and like I said every month we have our club meeting here so I may have four lathes going with different chucks and sometimes we need nothing but two inch jaws on a chuck and I've got a couple and I've got uh, club members in my club here that also can bring those. So let's take a look at uh, maybe the last series of chuck jaws that I really like and they're pretty cool to have. Okay, now you're looking at some of my really favorite jaw sets and let's start with this one right here. This is a Nova Chuck. That's a Super Nova Chuck. And this is what I use for my finials or very small items, maybe bottle stoppers or something like that. And this will tighten down to, I believe, 3 eighths of an inch. So that goes fairly narrow right there. And that's important. That's an important option to have in your shop when you're turning small items. Now this set right here, it's on a Vicmark 120 chuck body. And these are long nose jaws. Now these are really nice if you are turning maybe a box or anything that you want to get behind and you have a little bit more room from here to your chuck and from here to your headstock. So they're really powerful. They're on a very large chuck and they do a great job. And you may simply want to put a spindle in there like that and tighten that down and you can turn whatever you want to turn without even having a spigot or a tenon on there. So those are handy. A lot of times I will take these to a demonstration when I'm demonstrating because they're very secure. I'm not going to have a problem with something coming off that because they're really hefty. Now, this is a smaller option. These are some shark jaws. This particular set of jaws is on a Vicmark 100, which is their smaller chuck body. And while I'm on that topic, ordinarily you'll buy a chuck body and the jaw set separately. Now when you start out with this little chuck and the two inch jaws, they're going to come as a set. And what I would recommend from then on, just simply buy the chuck body and the jaws separately. So these are the shark jaws, another option. Now you can simply put that spindle all the way in there and tighten that down and you don't really need to make a tenon. So those are the shark jaws. This is another set that's very similar. These are the long nose jaws. Well there you have it. A lot to think about and a lot to consider. Many questions and when you're a new turner it's really difficult. Ask a friend, go to a club meeting and figure out what you need. Now I know what you may be thinking. I may have a bit of duplication when I got maybe two or three sets of jaws like this that are very similar. Well, there are times when I'm chasing threads and I'm using one chuck on one lathe and I'm making the corresponding insert on another lathe and I need a very similar set of jaws to do that. It's a luxury, I'll admit, but it's very nice. Don't start out with all this. Go very slowly and carefully, and if you have any questions ever, contact me. I'm the Wyoming Woodturner. Thank you very much for watching.